Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 tutorial. So in this one, we're going to be checking out how you can jailbreak your PS5 up to firmware 5.50 using the web browser completely offline. A completely offline setup compared to my previous guide, which shows how to do it online, which is obviously the most convenient way is to do it online. But if you want to completely stay offline to avoid system updates and to avoid uh, potentially getting console banned, which isn't really an issue on PS5 anyway when you connect online, because it cannot access PSN anyway, so that's not really much of a problem. But obviously, if you want to be extra cautious, the safest bet in all situations is to just stay offline. However, you miss out on a lot of useful network features, and that is why we're going to be using the ESP devices to run the jailbreak. So these are little Arduino-style boards. There's the ESP8266, which are the cheapest ones. You can also use an ESP32, an ESP32S2, or an ESP32S3. So these are little development boards that have a Wi-Fi chip that can run its own isolated network and host the jailbreak through a web server that your PS5 can connect to. And it's completely isolated and disconnected from the internet. However, other devices like your computer and phone can also connect to that network so that they can communicate to the PS5 for using features like FTP, remote package installing, and you know remote debugging and any other network features which you otherwise would miss out on if you were staying completely offline. So that is the advantage of using these chips. You get the benefit of still being able to use network features while remaining completely offline. So what we want to do before we get started is head over to our settings on the PS5, go to system, go to system software and system software update and settings. And you want to make sure that these two options are disabled, download update files automatically and install update files automatically. Now, why do we need this if we're staying offline? Well, you can still get prompted for system updates in certain situations, even when you're offline. For example, if you put a game disc for a PS5 game in your console that requires a higher firmware than what the console is running, then it will actually include the system update on the disc to update your console to allow it to play the game. So in that situation, if you have these options disabled, it will at least ask you first, hey, you know, do you want to update now or update later? And you can just say update later to cancel the update. So always a good idea to have these options disabled, even if you're completely offline. And uh, next, we're going to head into console information and check our system software version. So after the first dash, we have 04.03, which means my console's on firmware 4.03. Your console needs to be on firmware between basically 1.00 all the way up to uh, 5.50. Technically 3.00 to 5.50 for this jailbreak but you know, it's more or less the same on firmwares 1.00 all the way up to 5.50. So you wanna be on a firmware between 1.00 and 5.50 in order to follow this video. All right, so once you've confirmed all of that, we should be good to get our ESP chip set up here. So let's go ahead and switch on over to our computer to download a couple of things. All right, so over to the computer, we're using the project from 0x1 triple I one double I. This guy is on it when it comes to the ESP releases because he's got PS5 UMTX2 for the 8266, the ESP32s, the S2s and the S3s. So what you want to do is download the version that corresponds to your device, of course. So I'm using an ESP8266. So this is the version that I would download here. So download the one for your device. Then you also want to download the esphostmedia.package and the Node MCU PY Flasher. So download all three of those. So we want to connect the ESP device to the computer. Check to see if your ESP device requires a specific setting to get it into its boot mode or its program mode. So some ESP32s and 32S2s, you have to like hold down the boot button as you're plugging it into the computer in order to switch it into its program mode. Not required in most cases for the ESP8266s, you can just plug those in. And then secondly, we may also need to get the drivers if they're not automatically detected. So you can check that by right clicking on your start menu here and going to device manager. And if we open up device manager, we just wanna see, you know, if we do have a ports com and LPT and in there you're looking for you know, your device to show up there. So you can see mine says USB serial CH340 on COM port 7. If your device is showing up with a little exclamation mark, meaning that it's missing a driver, then you'll have to get the drivers for it. If you look at the back of your device, it might say what driver it uses on it. So some ESP8266s use the CH340 driver like mine, and some other ones use the CP2102 driver. So check to see which driver your specific model uses. I'll leave a link to the CP2102 drivers here 
in the description. And also if your device uses the CH340, I'll also leave a link to this in the description as well, where you have to scroll all the way down to here, where you have the driver executable or the zip file, and you can just download the drivers there. So here's the CH340 driver. I can just extract that into a folder. And then also we've got the CP2102 driver, which we can also just copy into a folder. And then you can just install the driver by selecting, you know, mine is a CH340 for my ESP device. So I would take this driver here, just right click the file path and copy the address. And then from there, we can go ahead and take device manager, right click on the driver that is missing. So you just right click on it, update driver, browse my computer for drivers, paste in the location, and then you just click next. And then it should install the driver. Obviously mine are already installed and then you should be all good to go. And you want to make sure that it shows up properly under a COM port. So mine is on COM port 7 and you want to note down what COM port yours is showing up on. So from here, all we need to do is open up the Node MCU Flasher application so that we can flash. And then we're going to select our serial port as our COM port that was showing up in Device Manager. Then also the Node MCU firmware. We're going to browse for the bin file that we downloaded. And then we can just click open to open up the file. So we have it loaded in here and then we can select the baud rate normally i just do 115200 but again on the back of your chip it might say hey use this particular speed so on my chips it says to use uh, 9600 so i'll select that and then also the flash mode it says here most esp32s and 8266s and esp12s use dio but some use qio so i'll just leave it on dio which should be the default and we do want to say yes, wipe all data to get rid of any previous data on the device that might have shipped from the manufacturer. And then we should be good to go. We just flash node MCU and that's going to start writing the exploit onto the chip. OK, and once it says firmware successfully flashed, we can go ahead and close out of that. Then you can just unplug the device and plug it into one of the back USB ports on the PS5. So I just use this short USB cable so it doesn't touch the ground. But, you know, you might have a dongle version that you can just plug directly into one of those back USB ports. So before we switch over to the PS5, we also want to grab our ESP host media package and copy that to the root of a USB drive. So a USB drive that's formatted in either XFAT or FAT32 format. And you want to copy the package in the root of the USB, not inside any existing folders. Also, we want to install the items flow application as well to the root of the USB drive. So I'll copy this package file here into the root of the drive. You can download items flow from pkg-zone.com on your browser and just head to the items flow game manager here on the right. Should be one of the top apps. And then you can just download for PS5. Make sure it is the PS5 version you download, not the PS4 version. And then you can copy it to the root of our USB drive here. So from there, we can go ahead and eject our USB drive and we'll also plug that into another USB port on the PS5. So now we'll switch over to the PS5, head into the settings, go to the network settings, settings and set up an internet connection. And then from here, we just want to press the options button, make sure Wi-Fi frequency bands are on automatic or 2.4 gigahertz. And then we're going to scan for networks. And then we should find it here. So we've got our PS5 ESP host. So that's the one that is running on our ESP device. So we're going to select that and then enter the password, which should just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That should be good. So what we can do is click OK and get connected up to that network. So it will not be able to connect to the internet, of course. That is what you'd expect. So cannot connect to the internet. But if we head back to system, system software console information, you can see we have an IP address 10.1.1.100. So from here, we can then go to the user guide and it should redirect the user guide over to the exploit running on the ESP chip. So we'll say yes to accept the certificate and run the jailbreak on the ESP host here. And this runs the new UMTX2 version. It might crash your console uh, when you try to do this. So if that happens, you'll just have to restart and try again. But eventually though, it should start loading the ELF loader and you'll get a notification popping up on screen along with the payloads that you can select. And the main payload we want to run that actually jailbreaks our console is the ETA hen payload. So we're going to select that with X and run that payload. Now this payload can take quite a while to start up. So you're going to have to give it some time. You'll get the, you know, welcome message eventually. So just wait for all of these notifications to eventually disappear. And then you know it's loaded. If you're on a firmware from 1.00 up to 2.70, it will actually give you a message saying it's putting your console into rest mode 
and then you have to wait for your console to fully enter rest mode and then you'll have to power on your console again to come out of rest mode and then go back on the same page again and then run it a second time in order for you to get these messages that's just a bit of a difference between how those older jailbreaks are loaded compared to firmwares like 3.025.50 which just run the welcome message as soon as you load it so once you get all of those notifications disappeared we can then close out of the browser by pressing the ps button and now we have successfully got our console jailbroken so if we head back to our settings menu we have to exit the settings menu and then go back into it and you'll now find the debug settings showing up here at the bottom so we're going to select that option and that will take us to the eta hen toolbox and then from here we can go to our package installer to access the package files that we put on the usb drive and we're just going to install all which will install both of these so we get our media shortcut and our items flow installed so now we should have items flow which is now available and also our media shortcut here for our esp host so if i select this you can see it will automatically take us right here to the host that is running on our esp device so that means when we reboot our ps5 and we want to run the jailbreak again we can just run this and it will take us straight here to the shortcut and we can run the jailbreak from our esp device instead of having to go back into the user guide to load it every time so that is a handy feature there and of course we have items flow which can be used to load our ps5 game dumps with lots of other handy features for jailbroken consoles and as mentioned earlier we do in fact have network features that we can access on the ps5 which even though we're completely offline with the esp chip we can also take advantage of so if we go into services on the eta hen toolbox you can see we have an ftp server here there's also the direct package installer that i can enable as well so that we can install package files remotely from another device on our network so in order to access these features all you have to do if we switch over to our computer again i've got an ftp client open this is filezilla all we have to do is just connect to that same esp chip on our computer and then once we're connected to that network i'll be offline on my computer as well but i'll be able to access the ps5 through the ip 10.1.1.100 and then the port number for ftp was 1337 and we can connect there and as you can see i have access to the file system of my ps5 remotely not only that but i can also access the direct package installer by entering that same ip address in my web browser and using 12800 as the port number and that will take us over to the direct package installer so i can choose a package file and remotely install it to my console so you can still access these useful network features while using an esp device while continuing to remain completely and utterly offline on your ps5 to prevent system updates or if you're worried about getting banned or for whatever other reason why you've decided that you do not want to connect to the internet so anyway hopefully this video helps you get set up with the jailbreak completely offline if you enjoyed this video or found the information useful, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.